Hey there guys, it's Clements again from the Graphic Technologies and this is the ninth video of my HTML and CSS course. If you were with me in the previous video, we talked extensively about HTML forms. But now, we're going to go into something a little bit more laid back, but still equally as important. And that is HTML5 semantic and non-semantic elements. Now, what are HTML5 semantic elements and non-semantic elements? Well, to answer that question, we need to go back into what semantics actually means. Well, semantics is a study of words, the study of the meaning of words and phrases in any language. Therefore, it also implies that HTML5 elements are elements that actually have meaning to both, to both the developer and the browser in HTML5. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, basically, we have seen a lot of semantic elements already. Like the body tag, the body element is a semantic element because it communicates to both the developer, you and me, and the browser that anything that's meant to be in between this body element is what will be displayed in the browser. We've seen several semantic elements like h1, h1 tag, hey there, I am Clement the h2 tag, and all the h tags, really. Um, I love pizza. Um, we've seen um, other elements like uh, the form tag, which takes in our input element, we handled last week. And uh, we've seen quite a lot of semantic elements, really. But we have not seen non-semantic elements. Now, what are non-semantic elements? Non-semantic elements are elements that really don't have much meaning. They don't really communicate any meaning whatsoever. They just, um, they're basically used as containers, sort of. And we've not seen a lot of this, have we? No, we've not. And I'm going to cover this in this lecture. And also go back to show you more examples of semantic elements. But first, I'm going to handle the non-semantic elements. Now, an example of a non-semantic element is... Uh, div. We have not seen this element yet. A div is used in HTML to specify a container. Like, you, you, maybe you don't really care about what the meaning of the container represents. You just want to have a container there that, that serves the purpose of holding your h1 tag, your h2 tag, or your p tags, or whatever tags you have. Like, let's let, let, let me run this. A minute let me clear this one's above and you run the div this div takes in the h1 tag that says hey there guys and I love and the p tag that says I love pizza let me take the mouse away then I save this page if I run it in the browser you see nothing much has changed really hey there guys I love pizza the problem with this as you should see is I will encourage you that divs are not bad. Everyone uses divs. A lot of browsers use divs. But I will encourage you that to try to use more semantic elements in your markup than to use divs. Reason being, most times in the web development space, you'll be working in teams or you'll be sharing your codes to um, online websites like GitHub and the rest. So you want you want people to understand the kind of code you're writing. So having excessive divs really doesn't help that because a div actually mean nothing. You can't communicate to anyone what this div is meant for. An alternate usage of this will be um, maybe saying like in the beginning of a page, then you, you ha can have your, instead of using a div to um, contain all your text in that page, you can use a sort of header to indicate the beginning of your page and this header will take a h1 saying welcome to my home page and maybe a h tag saying we do awesome stuff then um, you can just go over here and say uh, let me say the next part of your website could maybe a section tag which is also a semantic tag meaning that is the next section of your page yeah you can give this an id 
or whatever, calling it um, the um, works section, maybe the work you do in your page. You want to display to your to your users that this is the work we do. Then you have a H1 tag. We help kids be better at school. Then you can have an image tag showing different things about how you help kids. It's just the main point of this is to show you that it's better to write more understandable code than to use a lot of divs. And we see a lot of bad, I see a lot of bad practices most times. People write divs within divs within divs. Um, it's a common um, um, bad practice in the web development space. It's actually called div-itis. <laughs> it's really funny because if you see some, okay, let me just save this and show you first. Save this page, show you guys. Yeah, you can see. Uh, it, it's not really showing much. Um, it, it's not really displaying well because we've not really sh um, gone into CSS and styling. But this best to the best websites really are websites that can communicate their message without the use of styling. When we look at the source code, we, we'll soon go into looking at source code in browsers. But for now, just know that semantic elements are more advisable to use than non thematic elements well i should be did although um non thematic elements aren't bad because there's just some sections of your page that you may not really need to communicate the meaning exactly like um maybe a, a certain um a, a sort of sub container in your section for example maybe you have a section tag that has h1 and maybe just you want to do a fancy uh, styling, I've not gone into that yet, but a fancy, a fancy styling at a particular part of your section, then we can use a div and call it uh, given an ID. This is very important for divs. It doesn't really meet, do much to it. It just makes it more easily understood by anyone looking at it. You can give it a class or an ID. It doesn't really matter. It does in a way. Um, I'll go into what classes and IDs represent later. But I'm going to give it a class of my fancy art. Then you can do, you can maybe use CSS to do some fancy art there or whatever. I haven't really gone to CSS, so I'm not going to spend much time on this. But the div should have, you should try your best to make your div as you know little as possible. Or if if um you have to use a div, at least communicate it to your fellow developers that may see your code or anyone that 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 may want to understand your code. If you're about that. But it's better to to use more semantic tags when you can than to use divs. Well, um, you see a lot of bad practices all the time, it's like people using divs inside divs, inside divs, inside divs. Um, it's this this is this is not very right. It's it doesn't really help in understanding of code. Uh, it, as I said before, this is called dividers most times. Most people use divs a lot because they don't really know. Um, um, they don't really know how to communicate what they want to do on your web page. So um, we're, we're going to be doing a project at the end of this course, a, a mini project on HTML and CSS, and I'll, I'll try my best to show you the best practices in terms of using semantic elements and as little divs as possible. All right. Um, yes, so I'm going to show you more example of semantic elements. Like there is the article element, article. It's usually used for you know when you have like a like a blog post for example let's say a section of your page rather let me start with a section tag a section of your page has a blog post now let me clear all this so you can see the code better a section of your page ha your page has a blog post and I guess this is the first section and you have the article this article should take in your different your um, individual blog post like um, or yeah, basically, it takes a H1 tag, the future of our economy. If I knew how to spell, <laughs> it got a key, what? <laughs> okay, and maybe you're, you have different paragraphs that say a lot of stuff, lorem ipsum, uh, whatever. Then um, just write a bunch of trash there, doesn't really matter. Then have another P tag that does similar stuff like I love acorns. I think they are a really good fruit. Are they fruit? I think so. So um, we have another article tag that takes in something similar to this, like you know, different blog posts in the section. 
So uh, it's basically a best practice to use as much semantic tax as possible, uh, but it's not terribly bad. It's not um, terribly bad to use a div once in a while. That's what I'm trying to communicate in this video. And there are um, other um, semantic tags. They are, there is the aside tag. Aside basically is a uh, um, for um, things that are just by the side of your page. Like if, let me see if I can see an example in w3schools.com. Uh, like this now. This tag that says HTML5 tutorial. This is probably an aside tag. That it's, it stays at the side of your, of the web page, like just at a particular corner. Doesn't matter left or right, but most of the times it stays at the left. It stays at particular at the particular um, side of the page, and it's it usually communicates to whoever is reading your code that this is the aside element. So instead of using a div for, for this container, instead of using a div, you can use an aside element. Most people just use divs, 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 divs. It, it, it gets pretty, um, it makes your code really messy most times if you can really communicate to the user what your divs, what your um, different containers in your page are all about. So there's the aside tag. Then there's the, um, I've already said section. Then there's the footer tag. I think I've said header before. The header tag stays at the top like this is most likely the header tag where this w3schools.com is. It's most likely the header tag. Then there's the footer tag footer tag that has let me just yeah that has this um this last part of your of the w3 schools website um this place is probably the footer tag because the footer tag is meant to communicate to whoever is doing your code that this is the footer form for my page so it's really stayed at the bottom of the page just below the body tag so if i write footer then i can write whatever i want to write inside like h1 um this is a footer tag. If I go back here and reload the page, you see that. Oops, my bad. Reload. If I save this and reload the page, you see that um, the footer tag really um, it, it 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 doesn't really move downwards because we don't have CSS. But this is actually a good um, a good practice to always have different sections of your code understood by whoever is viewing your code. So. There are many more. You can view them in the um, W3 Schools website, as I will encourage. And uh, I think um, before um, that, let me just show you one more um, non-semantic tag that's also pretty popular. Like this, it's called the span tag. It's usually um, in between stuff like a H1 or a, a paragraph tag. Like let's say I am a great. Then we want to write it in the span tag. Maybe we want to give the next word. A sort of styling and write guy here so people usually do stuff like this it's not bad per se this pan doesn't really mean anything it just means um, a word that spans this space but um, it, it, it's uh, I encourage you to use more um, non semantic tags when you can like it doesn't make any sense write in a span then you write it within a span then within a span no this is becomes really terrible code very terrible I'm a very bad practice so uh, I, I hope you have not confused you too much by my um, um, take on the semantic and non-semantic tag. But one message to take from this is use more semantic tags as often as possible. And this brings me to the end of the video. I hope you loved this video. Please leave a like or subscribe if you can. Thank you very much for watching this video. Good day.